Jeffrey Fret in Brooklyn, and uh, one of the questions we get asked a lot is, gosh, what are all those different types of banjos sitting around? Because these days, most people are familiar with the original five-string style banjo, of which this is a particularly beautiful and uh, exquisitely crafted example of a Fairbanks number no. nine. Uh, but most modern banjo players play some version of a five-string banjo, but uh, earlier in the 20th century, there are a lot of different banjo variations, and I'll try to take you through a quick tour of how they came about. So this was what people were playing solo in the 1890s and early 1900s, and the characteristic of a banjo besides the skin head is that it has the fifth drone string. So that worked really well for solo instruments, until people started trying to play banjo in a jazz band. And what they discovered is when you're playing fast moving music in ooh, horn keys like E flat or B flat, that fifth string is a huge pain in the ass. So what players started to do is they took it off and removed it from the banjo. Banjo manufacturers noted that and they came up with what's called the plectrum banjo, which means essentially it's a fifth string banjo without a fifth string meant to be played with a pick. So if you already played banjo and you wanted to go join a jazz band, this was the kind of instrument that you would pick up. But a lot of people joining jazz bands didn't have any background playing the banjo. In fact, a lot of them were violinists or mandolinists looking for a new gig when ragtime really took over. So what they came up with for them was initially the mandolin banjo, which is just what it looks like. It's a mandolin neck on a banjo body. It's easily the most obnoxious of all the fretted instruments. Um, they're very bright, very loud. Uh, not too many players play them now, but you can hear them on a lot of old uh, ragtime records and uh, black string band records of the 1920s, because if you're playing in a jug band, this was something you could definitely hear over the jug. Uh, but for playing in a jazz band, it turned out that the eight strings weren't really that useful. So they took the next obvious step and took four of them off. And around 1912, 1915, came out with something called the tango or melody banjo. What this is, is a mandolin banjo, but with only four strings. It's still in mandolin or violin tuning, and it's just loud as heck. And it really cut through, but it's a little bit obnoxious. So the next idea, was to take the four strings and tune them down a little bit. So they tuned them down to where a viola would be tuned instead of a violin, and came up with the first version of the tenor banjo. So this has a longer neck, fairly large size head, but like the older five strings, it's still an open back instrument. Everybody made these, oh, between 1918 and the early 1920s. This is a particularly lovely Orpheum made in New York City, right here in New York. And this, because everyone thinks of Gibson when they think of banjos now, this is the first style of banjo that Gibson was making about 1919. And uh, it's not quite a master tone yet. Although it will still play a mean Charleston. This isn't the Gibson banjo that people are uh, mostly obsessed over nowadays, but it's still kind of a neat and beautifully made instrument. After a couple of years of playing in dance bands with uh, four saxophone players over here, two trumpet players over here, none of these banjos seemed loud enough. So a maker in New York called Lang, who built this plectrum, developed the modern resonator and the flange. And this is taking us back to square one. Uh, this is a Vegaphone, which is a orchestra tenor version of the old tubaphone banjo that we started out with. Basically, this combines a longer scale neck with a full resonator and flange in about 1923, 24. This is what everybody started making. And if you play in a jazz band, this will still do the job for you. So that's basically up to now how the banjo developed. A modern bluegrass banjo is essentially a Gibson made five string variation on this. And that's, we've sort of come full circle now. We have these very elaborate five strings, but they all come out of this 
kind of wacky development. How do we play the banjo with other instruments and not have that drone string wanging along? So nowadays we've all come back to this, but I hope you've enjoyed the tour of the many places the banjo's been. And I hope you come around and play some banjos and take them there again. <laughs>